Hey everybody, this is Schmo's No Intern RB3, and you are watching the Cinescape Podcast. Enjoy. Join the online radio revolution today and spread the word. Toxic Radio. Welcome to the Cinescape Podcast, where we're changing the landscape of movie and TV news and reviews. Good afternoon on a dreary Sunday afternoon here in Jersey. I am your one of your hosts, Sean Harrigan. As always, I am joined by Rowdy Roddy Tazi. Bill Woo! <laughs> How's it going, buddy? I'm doing great for uh, this dreary... Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a little foggy the last couple days. Yeah. yeah unseasonably warm for mid to late january but yeah. uh you know we're we're getting through we're it we also have uh our producer extraordinaire behind the board there michael how's it going buddy hey 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 ready to get this going yeah man i'm on a diet by the way yeah mike yeah. looks uh, a little slimmer than it's, you know it's, not that you really appear you, on camera too much and but. your color is good too you don't have that jaundice look that you uh you had <laughs> no, prior no, he doesn't no. look like he's on the verge of death anymore i i, I, I kind of <laughs> am there's no beer there's no there's, there's no, no beer i'm not allowed to drink beer on it i'm no not allowed beer? to you can't sit and watch a movie without Shut any beer. Shut the f*** up! I know, I know. <laughs> Grown men aren't supposed to diet. They weren't uh, meant for it, but uh, nah, see, excited to be here. That's why the uh, the dot, you know, the dad bod is. The dad bod. I love is, the dad bod. Uh, oh, dude, I mean, when, when people start posting about the dad bod. Right. Is, that, is that really a thing? Like, it's girls thing. are into it? If it is, hey, I'm right there, so I don't have any work to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a thing. If they're into it, that's another story. <laughs> All right. Well, today's show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial by going to www.audibletrial.com slash the Cinescape podcast with over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Uh, a little bit later in the show, we have a special guest calling in from the Hall of Heroes Museum in Indiana. Uh, his name is Alan Stewart, so he's going to be talking to us about uh, you know, what he's doing with his museum, some of the cool things he has going on and kind of how he got that Alan. started. Alan. Yeah, Alan. Alan. Uh, but first, Bill, before we get into our TV buzz segment, you have a couple of uh, yeah, notable we, things yeah, to bring up. Yeah, we got some things coming up, you know, uh, some entertainment news. That's what we deal with, entertainment. And, uh, you know, just the other day, Rolling Stone posted on their website that the Wayne's World 25th anniversary screening will be coming up in February on the 7th and 8th uh, in select theaters across the country. Um, if you want to go check it out, go to www.waynesworld2525.com and uh, you can find locations in your area to purchase tickets. Sean, are we going to do Wayne's World 25, February 7th, 8th? I mean, I feel like we should. Wayne stuck. <laughs> Wake up, Wayne. What's... uh? We've debated this. Wayne's World 1 or Wayne's World 2? Oh, man. That's, see, this is a case where, you know, the first movie is good and the sequel doesn't suck. Right. I mean, this is a real toss-up. I don't I don't know if we can... Uh, we should put a, uh, a trivia poll out there. Yeah, uh, th Mike, can I'm, you, um, can you load up to. onto the Facebook and uh, do a trivia poll for whether people like Wayne's World 1 or Wayne's World 2? I have no idea how to do that. Now here, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get. Here's, here's what you're gonna wow, do. Wow, Mike knows nothing for one. <laughs> I, that's the you caught me with my pants down. Wow. Here, I'm going <laughs> onto our Twitter page, and you can find us at Cinescape Cast. Go to our Twitter uh, handle. I'm gonna put up a poll right now. Party on, Wayne. Wayne's World One or Wayne's World Two? I think if you're gonna hold a gun to my head, I'm gonna have to say Wayne's World Two. What about you, Bill? I'm going to have to go Wayne's World 2. Wayne's World 2? Whoa! <laughs> Mr. Scream over here. I feel like we need that. Ha! Ha! that's uh, the Kids get excited. They're cranked. What yeah. else do you have uh, besides the uh, the Wayne's World? While I'm well, as up. you're posting, um, 
we're going to dive into music for a moment. Uh, music? I mean, you know, we are on a music station. We are? And we are on a metal station. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, what is going on here? <laughs> we got Iron Maiden tour news that dropped this oh, week. Oh, yeah. I, I heard about that. Iron Maiden is coming to the U.S. doing stadium tours this this summer. And Philadelphia is on the list for June 4th. It's a Sunday, albeit, though. Do you believe that? Is, Sunday? Is that, is I, I mean, people are kind of losing their shit over this whole Iron Maiden. Is that a what big do you, What do you deal? mean they're losing their shit? Like, like, it's, I, like, it's, like, is that a big deal? I'm not an Iron well, Maiden they, they, fan. Well, they haven't. They, they don't, you know, tour regularly. So when they do tour, it's... Um, it's in large capacities now. The last time I saw them was um, on the Big Four tour, which was in uh, New York City at uh, Yankee Stadium, and that was um, what was that? Two thousand, uh, two thousand twelve, I think. Ah, I just um, got ecto yeah. cooler all over my pants. Uh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. That's, that's what she said. I got slime. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so they were on the big four do they, tour. Do they put on a good show? They do. Let yeah. me um, let me say this. Uh, prior to that, I saw them in two thousand five, right over here at the uh, w- at the time it was the Tweeter Center. Ah, the Tweeter. Oh, yeah. good for you. <laughs> uh, and that was on Ozfest, but they came on. They set up uh, Ozzy, and they stole the show. Like they came on stage, they did their set. You didn't even want to see Ozzy after you know after them. You're just kind of like you can't really. Yeah, they they put on a show that's you know comparable to like Motley Crue or Alice Cooper, where you know you know the songs, but it's the show that they put on that- stage as well. So you know. Just how you think of their their album covers as very you know loud and you know yeah. kind of like a storybook almost. Their shows are like the same thing. The set pieces that they have, some of the just weird shit that goes on that's, while they're that, rocking out. Like it's a it's entertainment. That's you know? what I that's what I appreciate when a, a band or a group or an artist go out there and put on an actual show. Right. Don't just play the music that's on the record, or else I can go home and listen to it. On my on my laptop, yeah, have a, have know, a stage presence. Put put some put some thought and have some some props. Absolutely, you know, act act it out a little bit and interact with the crowd and have some fun with it. I mean, I remember one of the best ones. Green Day does an absolutely awesome job at doing that. Eminem came out with a full. It was like it was like you're at a circus kind of get up behind him. Yeah. And stuff like that, like, really makes me appreciate a band. So I'm not a, I wouldn't say I'm a fan of Iron Maiden, but if they put on a show to that extent, I yeah. would definitely go check it out. Yeah, and that's the, uh, you know, that's the reason why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be going this summer. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I've already made the commitment. Baby. Oh, I'm in. You're all about Spinal Tap has Spin- some good, uh, <laughs> some stage props. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like a nice Stonehenge piece. Uh, but uh, Maiden is going to be um, touring uh, throughout the summer. They're going to be doing stadium tours, and they got a uh, ghost um, appearing with them, which I. Uh, um, haven't really gotten into before. Have you heard of Ghost? Yeah, you know, they got I the face really paint and stuff like that. Too much. Uh, they got a new song out that um, you know, I've heard on the radio. Uh, Square, uh, Square Hammer. It's a, it's a catchy tune. It's got a. Have you heard it? No, no. I just like that you said it's a catchy tune. It's, it's a catchy <laughs> tune. I don't think kids say that. I don't think yeah, <laughs> kids. Uh, there's a catchy tune only, out there. Only a man with a dad bod would say yeah, that. Yeah, try to listen to it on your music box. Go away. <laughs> 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 Get you to, uh, but yeah, they um, you know, they got uh, um, a catchy tune out there, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, really, it's, it's a, it's a, gets you snapping your fingers. It's, it's a toe tapper. It's a toe tapper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, I heard some of their stuff and it rocks, and um, you know, yeah. they'll be coming around this summer. So <laughs> that's what we got Get going on. Out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I have been hearing too, just uh, through the grapevine, that. We might be anticipating Metallica dates dropping Ooh, this coming week. I've also. heard that too. Um, a source close to another source that <laughs> is in another state with a sister to a, a brother in, and in a, in a different time zone. And uh, according according to my sources, at this particular time, the Metallica tour date could be coming as soon as Monday, the twenty third. Ooh. 
Excellent. Uh, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, the the story is my cousin Matt, who, you know, is uh, like an intern, basically, at this point, like on a 20-year intern uh, basis <laughs> with Metallica, um, basically knows a security guard who was in a work meeting, and they uh, had a meeting about that Metallica is going to be playing in Denver um, in, uh, what was it, June or something? I think something like that. So we'll probably get uh, some some dates around here nice. uh, towards the end of summer. I would definitely go to that. Yeah. Do you, did you like the new album? I haven't heard it all the way through. I've heard like the first three songs and the ones that are on the radio. Yeah. Um, but we're going to be putting the new album. Uh, I think it's like the the, the the deluxe version I got. The okay. Yeah, CD I got that for Christmas. You got that one, right? But yeah. uh, we got it for here at Toxic, and we're going to be uploading that uh, this week. Oh, you heard it here playing first. Playing it from back to front. Ooh. That's you never go back to front. You've heard it here first. Playing it, it, it in its entirety this Friday evening Ooh. during Mandatory Metallica. Nice. I like that. We're a little bit late on it, but we got it. Uh, so, yeah, so that's the uh, got a little music wrap up there for the uh, for the summer preview. Um, and, um, yeah, more to come on, uh, Toxic Radio and Cinescape with the music news that we, uh, Ooh. we're going to start integrating a little bit more nice. here and there. You know, like so we, we are a very rich area for, for music. Yeah, we know stuff. Dude. Yeah, we know. We know things about yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's keep it going. All right. So we are going to switch over from our new, uh, music segment <laughs> into our TV buzz <laughs> segment. <laughs> where we're going to start to highlight some of the biggest news stories from the world of television. Uh, this first one, uh, American Horror Story fans will be excited to hear uh, that the show has been renewed for an additional two seasons, extending the franchise through a ninth season. Also announced was Sarah Paulson and Evan Peters both returning for season seven. Bill, what do you think about more American Horror Story? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, I love it. Um, I think those two are pretty much the core of what makes this, you know, this show uh, really tick. Um, you know, with the addition of uh, Lady Gaga last season, um, she's a great supporting cast. But it's really these two right here. Everybody loves Evan Peters. He, uh, I was actually just watching some of Coven uh, last night again. Okay, and it was the episode where they put him back together. Yeah, Remember, he was all, all chopped up, up yeah. and they. They gave him the other dude's dick, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Frank and Dick. And then you know his mom's trying to bang him because yeah. they had some weird, you know, mother son relationship. Yeah, that was, that was very. And strange. then the the mother was feeling up her, you know, dead put together son, and she realizes <laughs> it's not him because it's not his dick. Totally weird That's stuff. Stuff but only a mother would know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you should have been part of their promo team to like, right. sell people on the show. This um, week on American Horror <laughs> Story. <laughs> a mother who hooks up with her son and realizes it's not her son because it's not his dick. <laughs> Rated PG. Uh, Rated PG-13. <laughs> uh, <laughs> does, uh, does the... Yeah, the lower quality of this past season kind of lower your expectations for the next season or the I, next two seasons? I don't seasons. know if it lowers my expectations because I, I looked at the season um, in two different ways. It was really an homage to a lot of different, um, you know, horror movies and, um, and scary movies and stuff like that. Um, so the way that it paid tribute to certain... Um, you know, certain horror movies, and then the fact that they were doing something different on the other end of things, and yeah, so there's two different spectrums of it for me. There's, you know, why, you know, why, you know, why I liked it and what they did um, well, but then there was the other adventure that they tried to do, and so if anything, I'm just at a level, you know, you know, even playing field because the that show always reinvents itself. You know, season after season. Yeah, the good so, part is yeah. that you know the next season will be so something exactly. totally different. So yeah. you know, it has a, a good chance to rebound. I think we can both agree that this was probably the worst season this past one of the yeah. show to date. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So definitely looking forward to see what they come up with next. Um, I th I had heard. I mean, there's an, a Slender Man movie coming, but I heard they That's did want to yeah. incorporate maybe some of that mythology into the new season too. Uh, you know, when that, uh, when that stuff starts to come out, we will keep you guys updated. Absolutely. 
Uh, the next story, the Flash actor Robbie Amell will reprise his role of Firestorm next winter, though it's unclear of how he'll be reintroduced. Uh, so a few seasons ago on the show, he actually wound up dying. Uh, a new Firestorm was uh, introduced. Uh, you know, he's been on Legends of Tomorrow as well, but it looks like uh, you know Robbie Amell is going to be returning to the role. Uh, it'll be interesting to see you know how they bring him back with a, probably like an Earth Two version of himself. Uh, but yeah, you know, good news if you're a Robbie Amell fan. Bill, read our next one. Sigourney Weaver's character has been partly revealed as Alexandra in the upcoming Defenders series on Netflix, along with a photo from Entertainment Weekly. The series is set to premiere sometime this summer. Finally, we get a little bit of Defenders news. Yeah, as we we've push gotten forward. a lot of stuff over the last week yeah. or so with new pictures coming out yeah. from Entertainment Weekly, set photos, things like that. Yeah, really, really getting a big push here for Defenders, you know, which is just a few months away now. Right. Uh, uh, this is one of them, probably the series that I've been looking forward to the most, finally getting everybody coming together in an Avengers uh, style show, a team up here. And I'm also very interested to see how they're going to portray Iron Fist coming up too. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Do you, th do you still think, uh, Defenders is going to take off the way that they, ex that they wanted to though with, you know, so much so much time goes by and stuff like that with these series. You know, everybody has, you know, obviously watched these series to, you know, to know what's going on in Defenders. But, you know, when we look at the Netflix series and everything moving forward, do you think Defenders is, is going to be up there with uh, some of the, you know, some of the other Marvel movies that are coming out at this time? Do you think um, it's going to really lift off? Because I, I feel like when you have, you know, these big events that Marvel does sometimes where, you know, it's going to take away a little bit. Do you think that's going to happen? No, I mean, especially because the TV world and the movie world, I mean, though they are connected, they're still wholly separate entities as well. So, I mean, if you're somebody who's just a casual fan, maybe, you know, you see the movies and then, you know, the shows come out, whether it's agents of shield or any of the Netflix things, uh, yeah, and especially with the way the TV is now, with you know being able to binge things, um, I think it's more primed for you know people to be you know amped up to either watch it you know all at once when it first comes out, or you yeah. know slowly over a couple weeks after it does. Um, yeah, you know, ever with all the buzz, you know, Luke Cage was great. Right. Both seasons of Daredevil were great. I enjoyed Jessica Jones. You know, we have Iron Fist coming out soon. And then, you know, we Punisher. have we have the Punisher looming overhead as well. So, I mean, there's just so much moving forward that, you know, is really there to you know, draw in new fans as well yeah. as the, you know, the pre-existing ones. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's uh, really, really good stuff coming up here okay. on the uh, horizon. Okay. You want to read our uh, next one, Bill? Yeah, sure. So, Quantico star Priyanka Chopra has suffered a concussion while filming a stunt during filming this past week. Because she got a great ass! <laughs> <laughs> the, the actress reportedly hit her head and was treated and discharged a few hours later. She has oh since... Oh, God, no. Please, <laughs> what is that? Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> she has since returned to the set to continue filming. Um, have you uh, watched Quantico? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I always found it f really amusing how they like build the show. Yeah, it's like you know what they're FBI agents, right? Right. And they're <laughs> it's supposed to be like this serious thing, but the, all the commercials for it are always like, check out these insanely hot young FBI agents as they fight crime and try to <laughs> you know whatever. <laughs> it's like so stupid. Like, uh, can we get a, a picture of like? A roster of FBI agents to see <laughs> what they actually look like. And well, yeah, like. and that's the thing. Like everybody <laughs> in the show is like good looking. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's like you know even like the guys are not like rugged like you know or like you know look no. like disheveled FBI <laughs> agents. Like everybody is just like hi I hi I'm a 22 year old hot body <laughs> FBI agent. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, but <laughs> it's uh it's a cool show. It's um I I feel like uh. ABC, that's what they're going after. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. all their shows are, like, polished in that sense. Um, but, hey, if it keeps people watching. She's actually going to be in the uh, Baywatch movie, too, coming up. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. Very good. Yeah. All uh, right, we have one more TV buzz story here. Although production on Star Trek Discovery begins next week or this coming week, the series premiere slated for May has been delayed again. Also announced was the casting of Spock's father, Sarek, who's going to be played by actor James Frain. I believe he's on Gotham, though I don't watch that show. Uh, yeah, this is... You know, this is one that we seem to talk about. It's a real every nut week. buster. <laughs> it really is. Um, yeah, there's so many problems with this series. I'm wondering if <laughs> they're gonna, you know, kind of shelve it altogether, or take it off the CBS all at what's all access. Yeah. Because you're gonna need to do something that's gonna be bringing people, you know, to the table to watch it and putting on a streaming service after delay after delay after problem is not going to get people watching it. So this could be one that, you know, when they finally do get it together, I think they might actually shift this to CBS proper. Well, the the whole thing to begin with is the, the, the fact that, one, I don't know if you heard over the past, uh, I think, two weeks ago, they were, um, CBS or uh, Paramount was just um, in court with, that uh, fan that made a... Axanar? Yeah, yeah, he made a fan film, and it, you know, the whole thing has been in debate for over two years now about, you know, whether if it's, uh, you know, very much to the liking property of Star Trek, or, you know, what did he steal, or what didn't he, and stuff like that. So, um, they, they found, um, you know, the company to be uh, the one in favor for, but now... The whole thing is sloppy too. You're gonna premiere the the episode on CBS, and then you're gonna take and it away. And then you're gonna take it away and put it on all access, where you know it's just gonna be strictly in the digital forum. And then what's that you know to really do? Just test the market as far as how Star Trek is gonna be uh, you know received by the audience. And then right. if it's good enough, we'll put it back on terrestrial uh, air and we'll show it on digital. Like it's it's very convoluted as to how they want to. Um, attempt this and I just thinking you know they don't have a concept really of what Star Trek you know wants to be for them going forward and when you think about that we just passed the 50th anniversary of Star Trek and what that should mean and you know you're kind of riding high on this buzz and then this comes out that another delay is uh, taking effect and that's just gonna like you said prolong things yeah probably take people's interest away um it, it's just it's not good for yeah, the franchise. Yeah, they're they're shooting themselves in the foot, you know, every week it seems and yeah, you know, I'm just not sure if the fan base is going to be and, there when and, the show actually does come out. And thinking back, I mean, you know, on Netflix they have all the series, right? They have the original series, Next Generation, DS9, Voyager, um Enterprise. And you know, the one thing that I was thinking that um would work well that at the time it just wasn't a concept, but you know, right now we have shared universes and stuff like that taking effect. And the one good thing was that at one point, Next Generation and DS9 overlapped one another. And there was some, you know, once in a blue moon crossovers. And, you know, you had Voyager taking place at the, you know, tail end of DS9 and stuff like that. What would be great is that each one of those shows captured a different angle you know, in a different, uh, you know, different captain, a different environment, and stuff like that. You know, it'd be great to have a show like that of Star Trek that you know can have these different, um, yeah, you know, run like parallel with another right. series. Yeah, I mean, even if you had you know multiple series that did that, that would be cool. But it would be great to have the show be more layered like that, where there's these overarching episodes because Star Trek was always. Uh, you know, it was getting, you know, better well written later on when they would have these, you know, overarching episodes that were kind of like a like a two hour movie almost that yeah. kind of really, you know, had a lot going on. And that's when you had really fun stories. But, um, you know, just this is going <laughs> to really be a setback for uh, for all parties there. Yeah, absolutely. We'll uh, we'll keep you guys updated should anything new uh, come out in the next uh, few weeks. All right. In about 10 minutes, like I said, uh, our special guest will be calling in. We are going to try to get through Let's as, flip many, some of that script, baby. as many stories as we can. We'll uh, come back to them you know, after 
after our interview, but we are going to be flipping the script here and changing the focus to film news. Uh, so a bunch of our Marvel actors have confirmed yeah. that they will be appearing in the upcoming in that new Infinity porno, War. right? Yeah, the yeah, <laughs> Avengers Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the first one was Zoe Saldana revealing that she will be portraying Gamora in uh, Infinity War, saying, uh, "I don't know when they're going to let me read it." Talking about the script. I mean, I'm not looking forward to the five hours of green makeup, but every time I finally arrive on set, I feel so happy and lucky to be there. Also confirming that he will be portraying Spider-Man is actor Tom Holland. This one... Spider-Man. It's translated from an Italian uh, outlet, Luomo Vogue. So the English isn't you know perfect here. I'm just going to read it how it is. It sounds a little goofy. Uh, the approval for the role in Spider-Man arrives personally also by Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans. They who convinced the Marvel, the producers, wanted to be sure that I was the right person before entrusting three films over the next four years, including Avengers and Infinity War. So, yeah, the tr rough translation there, but basically, you know, he's going to be there. And then Karen Gillan, who plays Nebula, yeah. also confirmed that she'll be back, saying, I'll be making a little appearance in the next Avengers movies. So that's also part four. Uh, as well, but it sounds like. Bill, what do you think about all of our, a lot of our heroes returning for Infinity War? Uh, it's coming together real quick. Um, it's right it's around the actually, corner. Actually, it starts filming this week. Yeah. It starts filming It's right week. around the corner. I mean, when we think, yeah, May is going to be here in, you know, just a few months, and then you fast forward one year, boom. Yeah. Boom. Are you ready, man? Oh, man. The, this news is just this, this. Yeah, this is a good starting point. I mean, we've heard rumors that there's going to be like 67 different characters from the whole universe appearing here and there. So, you know, once we start getting one, we're going to get two, we're going to get three, and then you know we're going to find out uh, just uh, how we're filling up the roster of characters here. So it's yeah, it's an exciting time if you're a MCU fan. Bill, read our next one. Woody Harrelson has officially been cast in the upcoming Han Solo film after rumors been, uh, began circulating. Uh, Harrison will be playing a mentor to Alden Ehrenreich's Han Direct... What? How did you type this? Han Directors Phil Lord... There's a period there. I mean, yeah. stop. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an abbreviation. Fuzzball. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was an abbreviation, and I was like... <laughs> I'm retarded. Uh, <laughs> well, that's because you're an idiot. Oh. Oh, that's it. He's like, <laughs> guys, you go sit He's in the like, corner. <laughs> Look what you uh, did. Mike Kid can't like, even read. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no, Bill. I heard you. Uh, you recently made a purchase. There it is. Oh boy. I feel I'm like gonna, I'm in trouble I'm now. I'm gonna cut your goddamn head off. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh, i can't wait till they officially make lightsabers like the real deal oh that's so awesome and then then, then somebody like bill goes Whoa. out and gets a permit to have one and then this is what he does Oh my goodness! So as Bill is uh, wrecking shop here, uh, <laughs> directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller commented on <laughs> this news, saying, "We couldn't be more excited to work with an artist with as much depth." Oh, <laughs> oh my God, I just stabbed myself with my own lightsaber. He is an adult, uh, right? I think so. He pays bills. That's what they tell okay. me. Okay. With as much depth and range as Woody, his ability to find both humor and pathos often in the same role, is truly unique. He is also very good at ping pong. Bill, did you know that Woody uh, Harrelson is good at ping pong? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Um, yeah. <laughs> you I, I saw him in the 1986 ping pong Olympics in Beijing. Okay. He was the uh, only uh, Westerner to uh, show up to that event. Um, coincidentally, it was the same year that uh, Frank Dukes uh, p participated in the Kumite uh, wow. you know, uh, th the movie that Bloodsport is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, written after and uh, Come on, don't bullshit me. no, no, no bullshit. <laughs> no, no bullshit. This is uh real shit. Um, so, <laughs> uh, you know, so yeah, I knew, I knew that. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. 
All right. <laughs> nice little tidbit there. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we got. Bill, you want to? Can you, can you try read, to read this next I'll one? I'll read the next one. Let me just. Hooked <laughs> uh, on phonics. Wait, which one did you. Okay, you finished that one. Okay. So, according to Deadline, Justin Rhodes and David Goyer have been tapped to write the screenplay for DC's Green Lantern Corps, which. Which. Goyer, Jeff Johns, and John Burke will produce. The, the film will also reportedly have Hal Jordan and John Stewart as Green Lanterns. Could you have oh written that? Oh, my God. Could you have written that any more to, to try and throw me off with Goyer and Goyer. Geoff Johns and John Burke and Hal Jordan and John Stewart and Kristen Stewart and, and Cal Just Penn? French and, Stewart. Yeah, French, French Stewart. Stewart. For now on, write all the, the, the stuff up with a thesaurus, yeah, like right. with the most messed up words, <laughs> <laughs> as we just watch Bill squirm trying to ah. get to it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Green Lantern Corps. It's going to suck. It's going to suck? Yeah. I saw a rumored shortlist for uh, Hal Jordan. Right. Guess who is on the shortlist somehow? I, I Take it with a grain of salt, but... Uh, somebody that's on the list to yeah. play him. Did he play him before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. Right. Yeah. Why? Why would you kick the tires? As a on joke, that again? I don't. I don't know. know. I don't know how uh, you know legit that is. <laughs> but I think that would be. I mean, he wasn't bad. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I'm part of the Blue Lantern Corps. Look at me with my blue <laughs> stick. It's not a ring, but it's... <laughs> Sir, that's oh, a lightsaber. Uh, yeah, you're right. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know where to go from that. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> for, threw me off. for a show without alcohol today, it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty good, right? It's yeah, you know, it's all the sugar in the ecto-cooler yeah. we've been drinking here. <laughs> We're drinking the Yay, Kool-Aid. Yay, sobriety. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by ecto-cooler. <laughs> ecto-cooler. No longer made. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, next one. Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Colossus will be appearing in Deadpool 2, according to writers Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese. Yeah, they were good uh, in you know, their small roles in the first Deadpool movie, uh, kind of playing the uh, you know, the straight characters to uh, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool's yeah. uh, more comedic outtakes. Uh, yeah, good news all around if you were a fan of those two in the first one. Bill, anything to add to that? No, I was actually no. just watching Deadpool last night, though, um, and then I fell asleep for a little bit, and yeah, but um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah cool. All yeah. right. <laughs> uh, Lucasfilm you know, has denied rumors that Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia will be digitally recreated for Episode Nine. Why would you so, do that? So we were talking about this during our last show. You know, would yeah. it be an ethically you know good thing to do? Right. And so we kind of debated that a little bit, but. Per their statement on StarWars.com, we don't normally respond to fan or press speculation, but there is a rumor circulating that we would like to address. We want to assure our fans that Lucasfilm has no plans to digitally recreate Carrie Fisher's performance as Princess Leia or Princess or General Leia Organa. Carrie Fisher was, is, and always will be a part of the Lucasfilm family. She was our princess, our general, and more importantly, our friend. We are still hurting from her loss. We cherish her memory and legacy as Princess Leia and will always strive to honor everything she gave to Star Wars. So to you know, put the rumors and speculation to yeah. rest, you know, this is not going to happen. Uh, I believe that it's a good thing. Um, yeah, if you do want to have her back, you know, she, all her scenes were filmed for Episode 8. Uh, you know, obviously, we don't know where the story arc goes on with her from there if she was set to also be in Episode 9. You know, if that's the case, they're not going to you know, digitally bring her in there. Uh, if they wanted to have her character there, they're going to have to recast, right. which will you know be a, a tall order there. Um, Bill, what are your feelings on this news? Uh, well, you know, we debated um, you know this news going back and forth. Um, you know, looked at both sides of it and all that. Um, but I'm glad they they got in front of it. Uh, you know, Lucasfilm, I'm, I'm glad they came out and got in front of the issue before, you know, all the fans start, you know, basically just feeling entitled to why they, uh, they're owed this. Um, but I'm, I'm glad they're not going to, 
you know, go ahead with uh, digitally recreating. I think it is one of those things. Yes, it's too soon and and all that stuff, um, but it's just it's letting her rest in peace, you know. Right. So I, they'll find a way, of, you know, around uh, writing and all that stuff, and I'm not too concerned about um, Disney's ability to handle that. What would you think if they went back on this news and wound up doing it anyway? Um, How, what do you think the backlash would be like? Time, men's, you know, all, you know, all wounds. Um, I think if you, if you did it years down the road when, you know, all this has subsided, the topic of it and stuff like that has subsided. And, um, you know, maybe if it's a thing where Disney doesn't recreate dead people all the time, yeah. you know, like <laughs> if they're just like, oh, let's bring back her. You know, good old Walt Disney and put him in the films again, you know. Um, if they do it very seldomly, you know, once in a while, if, if you know, like that, um, and they just happen to do it as a tribute down the road, uh, all right, let's, uh, let's consider it. But for right now, you know, I think the best thing is, is you know, yeah, we're not going to just throw her in a movie in a year to make sure – that we, you know, have a movie that sells half a billion dollars, right. you know? I'm ready for a, a movie you know, a couple of years down the road that's going to have all digitally recreated characters <laughs> or you know, actors yeah. that are dead and that have been dead for like 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that could be crazy. Hey, there's Cary Grant. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This one just uh, came out the other day. Dwayne The Rock Johnson will reportedly star in a standalone Black Adam film as well as the upcoming Shazam film. Uh, multiple sources uh, have reported that Black Adam will film concurrently with Shazam. The Rock previously spoke on his portrayal of Black Adam, saying, I have loved the role of Black Adam. I love that he starts off as a slave, that he felt like he was wronged. I have just loved that backstory. And I think that Black Adam has always been, for me, the most intriguing superhero. So, Dave, black actors. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock was actually... The Rock says... <laughs> He was first tasked to play Black Adam all the way back in 2008. The most recent news before that was that you know he was going to be in Shazam, and that came out in 2014. Yeah, it is 2017 now, and there still has been no you know traction with getting the movie into production or anything. Well, yeah, and then there was that whole thing on uh, on uh, the Rock's Instagram or whatever last week where. Um, do you see this? He's like standing in front of like DC's headquarters or whatever, and basically he's got one of those BS, uh, you know, uh, things like, "Hey, just got out of an executive meeting with the guys at DC. Real excited about what's to come and all this stuff." Um, so you know, once again, I think there's just some smoke being uh, thrown out there um, about DC, and they're just really trying to save face at this point. But you know, who I, knows? We'll, we'll I mean, have to it's. See. Yeah. When you cast somebody like The Rock in a role like that, obviously you want to get it out there, but I, I don't know why they've done it so far in advance to, you know, make everybody wait around for, you know, the first time that you get to see him. I mean, this has been nine years now since yeah. he's been, you know, cast in the role, and then you know another three years since anything more substantial has come out after that. It's it's just ridiculous, and it shows that you know DC is just you know really not on the ball with no. their cinematic universes at all it's uh, like uh you know it's like you know getting a, a girl's phone number you know and then like saying like oh, i'm not gonna call her for like three days or something but then three days is actually like nine years or something you know? yeah. <laughs> like yeah, i'll call you tomorrow or not yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll uh, we'll make a movie and uh, put it out next year. Not <laughs> five years later. Yeah, what the hell's going on? You know. Uh, well, <laughs> if that news didn't cheer you up, this one will. Bill, read this last story. Ooh, following the fallout of Terminator Genesis, James Cameron is set to return to the franchise as the God uh, as its Godfather, along with Deadpool director Tim Miller. Cameron is set to regain the film rights in 2019. Hmm. Oh, God, don't care, don't care. <laughs> really, like, I, I understand that he's getting the film rights back, and hopefully he can breathe some new life into it, but the last... Nobody wants another Terminator. I mean, 
one and two. That's it. Yeah. I'm not Salvation. But that's the thing. Like, not Genesis. I mean, these three, last three movies. And they are, you know, they are, two of them still had Arnold in it. And they are just awful. I don't understand how you can take a franchise that was, you know, trending upward in such a good direction and then well, just completely people shit people on have it. been wanting a new avatar from James Cameron. People haven't been saying, James Cameron, please make another Terminator movie, you know? So I think for him, he just doesn't have his priorities in check right now. And uh <laughs> it's like, yeah, you gotta figure it out, bro. You yeah. Know? Tater tots, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this really pisses me off to no end. <laughs> yeah, um, Tim Miller, you know, what he did with Deadpool was really cool. Um, you know, unfortunately, he's not going to be a part of the next one. But, uh, you yeah, know, hopefully, you know, getting these two together and collaborating to see what they can come up with will be, you know, a step in the right direction. Yeah, I would really like to see this uh, kind of go back to its roots and become more of a, you know, a horror movie like the first one was. You know, instead of just a straight like sci-fi action movie, I think those yes. horror elements in the first movie were really a part of what made that movie so special. You know, not only you have this you know killer robot, but you know it was it was terrifying at the same time, yeah. especially as you know a young kid when we first you know watched. And these and movies. the uh, special effects were within, you know, within reach. And yeah. it, he didn't use thing you know uh, special effects that were outside of. Uh, um, you know what was you know being made in house at that point. Right. You know, you use what you got. Absolutely, and that's what uh, kept it authentic too. Right, but uh, we yeah uh, we got a caller. Yeah, we have we have our guest on the line. We have Alan Stewart from the Hall of Heroes Superhero Museum in Indiana. Alan, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, guys. How you doing? We're, We're awesome. good, Alan. Hey, welcome. So thank you so much for calling in, Alan. And uh, hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. So. I'm going to turn it over to my partner, Bill, because he's the one that first, uh, you know, found uh, you in your museum. So I'm going to let him uh, start off this little, uh, this combo cool. here. Hey, Alan, it's Bill. How are you, man? Hey, I'm doing well, Bill. How you doing? Doing well. Thanks for uh, for joining us today on this Sunday. So, you know, I, um, you know, want to preface our, uh, our guests on, uh, you know, how I came about um, finding the... Uh, uh, the museum that that you run, and it's it's really cool. Um, I first saw you on um, the uh, Fast and Loud uh, show on um, on uh, the Velocity Network, and um, the uh, you know the episode introduced uh, um, you know you and the uh, and the museum that you run, and it was uh, you know it was cool because you were you first off you you were dealing with a uh, piece of memorabilia that. Um, you know that is very familiar to us because we're big Marvel fans here, and uh, it was the Shelby uh, Cobra that was in the first Iron Man movie uh, with uh, Robert Downey Jr. And from that point, um, you know, you you got the car for your collection, and uh, you know, you guys were highlighted on that show. Um, you know, so that was really the the you know the first time that we got uh, introduced to um, to the museum that you run. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to have you on the show today because as, uh, you know, as big uh, adult nerds here, we got to really see a lot of cool stuff that, that you have in the museum there. And, um, you know, just want to, you know, talk to you today and, um, you know, tell us first off, you know, how did you, how did you get into, uh, you know, into this business, basically? How did you get into, um, you know, starting a museum? It's it's kind of a it's it's kind of just you know like everybody else. I grew up with the stuff. You know, I grew up in the seventies. You know, Super Friends uh, reruns of the Batman from uh, nineteen sixty six. You know, I didn't see it in sixty six. I was born in seventy. So like around nineteen seventy five. You know, I'm seeing it when it's re airing after school. Um, just you know, started with that. My dad started giving me comics when I, you know, was like seven, eight years old, and just, uh, I just kind of didn't grow up and became addicted to it, and there's worse things you can get addicted to, but <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, I've been collecting for almost 40 years, and in that time, I've just amassed the largest superhero memorabilia collection in the world, and got into the industry in the 90s as a uh, publisher, um, comic book writer, I'm actually now one of the foremost comic book historians, I do a lot of the history and celebrity panels at a lot of the, uh, the Comic-Cons across the country, 
and just decided 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago, um, to build a two-story replica of the Hall of Justice in my backyard to kind of house the collection. And it was just started as a, a little local museum. Yeah. And then Stan Lee comes in, you know, five years ago and uh, films his super fan show at my museum. That's awesome. um, and you mentioned Fast and Loud last year. That was actually the fifth national TV show uh, that has filmed here at our museum. Um, but it's amazing. You know, it's, it's only about 3,000 square feet, but we've got over 60,000 comic books, over 100 pieces of original animation and comic book art, over 10,000 toys. Uh, of course, the, uh, the Iron Man Cobra was donated to us very generously by Richard Rawlings. Um, and then uh, one thing that we just acquired a lot of folks don't know about, we just also picked up a second Marvel movie vehicle, uh, Nicholas Cage's Ghost Rider motorcycle from the first film we knew. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> do you have a do you have a lot of Nick Cage uh, uh, memorabilia? You know, I feel like uh, that that's a guy right now that's um you know kind of you know has this uh, little overzealous uh, rap right now. And is there uh, any demand for Nicolas Cage uh, memorabilia? You know, the the Ghost Rider motorcycle it it is pretty badass. Yeah, <laughs> so he is. Uh. I mean, it's the actual Hell Cycle itself. Um, and what we do is we go around to uh, conventions and, and we take both Marvel movie vehicles. We also own uh, Chris Evans' uh, screen used Captain America shield from the first film. It's autographed by the entire cast. Wow. And uh, we kind of take the, the Marvel movie props and do kind of like a Marvel movie prop tour where it's kind of like the celebrities. You know, you pay for photos with the stuff. We kind of do that for donations for our museum because, uh, you know, it started out with my personal collection, but now we are a uh, – a nonprofit organization with a board of directors. I mean, we, we've just grown so much over the years, and now we are the uh, premier place. We're preserving the comic book history because mm. uh, no one else is doing that. So that's how we have our nonprofit status is the educational programs we do, the preservation programs that we do. And right now we're trying to raise $200,000 to move to a larger location because we don't have room to display the Marvel movie vehicles and, and a lot of things in our collection. We just we're out of room. Yeah, I, I saw that that you uh, that you guys are a nonprofit, and that's really great that you you know you've took this culture and you 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 know you're running with it in uh, you know in an educational aspect because you know let's face it uh, you know the kids growing up nowadays you know they're all attached to their phones and stuff like that so you know mm -hmm. taking us back to when we were kids picking up a comic book reading it. And, uh, you know, and having that, you know, that educational piece to it is definitely important. So, you know, I'm glad to see that you guys are, um, you know, taking a, you know, a, a very holistic approach to, you know, bringing, you know, comic books and bringing the, the culture, um, you know, in your community there. That's a, you know, that's an awesome thing to be doing, um, you know, in addition to just having fun. Um, now, d did you say earlier that you guys have the largest collection um in regards to um, memorabilia, is that how you? We we, we do, yeah. We have uh, well, at least it's not been disputed in ten years. Uh, we have the largest superhero memorabilia collection okay. in the world. Um, you know, of course, consists of the costumes, the props, the toys, the comics. Um, we probably have like the third largest comic book collection in the world, with uh, between sixty and sixty-five thousand comic books. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of going back to you know some of the stuff that, you know, our nonprofit stuff, the educational stuff, you know, we kind of show teachers how to use comic books in the classroom to teach history or science or literature or art or music. I mean, you can you can use these superhero themes, but the big thing is we like to use superheroes as positive role models. You know, we get yeah. cosplayers that volunteer for us, and we go out to a lot of charity events uh, for a lot of youth organizations like CAPS, which is the Child Abuse Preventive Services, uh, the local chapter here. Two years ago, we helped them put together like a superhero 5K run uh, that's getting ready to start its third year this spring. Um, and that they raised, I think last year we raised $35,000 for that organization, wow, uh, helping awesome. them out with that. And just, you know, we work with the Boys and Girls Club. You know, we work with schools. We work with a lot of great organizations. That's awesome. Um, now, it, I, I saw some pictures on, on, um, on the Facebook. Uh, is that you dressed up as Captain America? 
that that is me. In fact, uh, you know, I actually did something really out of the box that I've never done before. I do a lot of Captain America cosplay. I also do Joker too. I do it as uh, Beetlejuice. Okay. Uh, we do a super villain <laughs> King haunted house here every October because Halloween's like Christmas for me. I love Halloween. Oh yeah, so do so we. So we change like all the lights to uh, black lights, and we bring you know cosplayers from Chicago and Indy and Grand Rapids, and we do a super villain King haunted house, which is it's just amazing. Uh, that's cool. Um. But the Captain America thing uh, for Election Day in November, uh, it was really big in the news that I showed up at the polls and actually <laughs> cast my vote as Captain America because because it was so controversial this year. I mean, just you know all the riots and everything else. And and I tell you, I'm a veteran, and I believe very strongly in you know the you know soldiers, you know what we fought for, right. you know my fellow you know veterans have fought for you know the right to vote. And probably for the first time ever, I was I was concerned to not vote in this election. In fact, I was not going to do it up until the morning of. And I was at the gym working out, and I come home, and I'm like, you know what? I, you know, everybody's so negative about the election. I wanted to do something positive. Yeah. So, you know, took a shower. You know, I threw on my Captain America uniform, and I went to the polls, and I called all the news stations, and and they were covering it and putting it out there, and it went all over line. But you know. I actually went and cast my vote actually as Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, we we saw the the costume that you have there. I mean, um, is that is that a um, is that one from one of the movies? Because that looks pretty pretty damn authentic. It's it, it is. It's not from the movies though. Um, I had it made uh, overseas. Oh, okay. Um, but they, you know, and they. I, you know, they do some great costumes yeah. over there. And, you know, they don't have to deal with the licensing stuff. I guess maybe that's the reason. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, they do some great costumes. And I've done different bits of my costumes. I had the um, the, the, the trousers, the belt, and the top uh, with the actual real metal star on it. That was uh, done overseas. But I didn't like the gloves and the boots or the helmet that came with it. So then I customized those things on my own. I ordered like a separate helmet that was a replica of the uh, most recent, the Civil War. And it's it's like a a, a nice military, uh, you know, hard plastic, oh, well, kind of hard rubber uh, helmet. And it looks really good. And then I actually decided instead of the, you know, the crappy boot covers they sent, the costume was great, but the, the extra, the attachments were, were kind of cheap. And I actually wear my actual uh, military boots that I wore in the Army 25 years ago. So I wear my actual military boots with it. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. Alan, what would you say is your personal favorite uh, piece of memorabilia that you guys have in the museum? Oh, boy, that's tough. I mean, there's so many great pieces. Um, I, I'll tell you a couple of my favorites because I can't, I can't just go with one. But but maybe my ultimate favorite is probably going to be Adam West's personal Batman costume. Wow, how Ooh. about that? Because I mean, it's uh, yeah. I mean, we I grew up with that, um, and the costume that we have it's it was his personal one he wore throughout the seventies and eighties at public events, <laughs> not from the show. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Um, the boots are from the show. That the boots and the costume we have are from the show. But the rest of it, you know, he he wore it later. But this was like the you know the one. And there's there's a private uh, yeah there's a private collector that has the only existing complete one from the show, and then there's the one we have. And as far as I know, that's it. Okay, Alan. Uh, being that you got uh, the original uh, Batman costume, you know we uh, we just posted um, a little article that uh, came up this past week on on the Cinescape page, um, and it was about um, Christopher Reeves' uh, Superman uh, costume and um, uh, Michael Keaton's. Um, Batman uh, Returns uh, costume um, that were going up for auction. Now, uh, when you uh, procure, you know, items for the collection, do you do things like this? Like, uh, do you go to auctions and and have to bid on stuff, or or is everything you know part of a donation? We we've had a mix of everything, um, like the Iron Man Cobra. Uh, you know, Richard Robbins donated that to us. Um, the Ghost Rider motorcycle, and, and actually last July there's the big Hollywood auction. It happens in July. It's usually about a three-day auction. Uh, we purchased three pieces at that auction. That's where we got the Ghost Rider motorcycle. Okay. Uh, we also got Ryan Reynolds' screen-used Green Lantern ring at that auction. 
And then we purchased uh, from the third Spider-Man movie, where the Sandman, where he's three stories tall, he's absorbing cars and trucks and buildings and, and things. Hmm. Uh, we purchased the three-foot mo- clay model that they used to film that scene. Everything's to scale. There's like a big dump truck in the base of it and people yeah. and, and everything else. So it's really cool. We're going to, when we move to the larger location, we're going to put that like in a glass dome. Kind of show how they do some of the special effects and things at Marvel Films. Nice. What was the uh, actual first thing that you guys did get into the museum? Um, well, you know, there was quite a bit of a collection when the museum opened 10 years ago that I'd already been collecting for like 25 years previous to that. Or are you talking about as a kid, what was the first thing I got? No, I mean like uh, from a movie set. The first, The first movie piece that I got was actually before the museum opened, and this was probably 15 to 20 years ago. I had the opportunity, and I acquired, um, do you remember Grace American Hero with William Cat? Yeah. Okay, his costume. Okay. How about that? Yeah. And funny story about that, I bought that, and it was right around Halloween. And so every year, you know, I've always thrown a big Halloween party, and I do a different superhero, and I don't tell anybody who I'm going to be. It's like, you know, if you want to find out, you get to come to the party. So that year, I had just got the costume about three weeks before, and I put this on, and I go get like a curly blonde wig, and I do grace more I'm wearing the actual suit for for a Halloween party. And then, of course, then I've been drinking a little bit and decided to try a stunt (laughs) in the costume. Uh Uh-oh, what'd you do? (laughs) Huh? Uh Uh-oh, what'd you do? (laughs) Okay, so what I did is is I do I, I do a flip over a bonfire off of a trampoline wearing <laughs> what one of only two of these that exist. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, I feel a little, a little crazy. I'm a little older and wiser now, but I, I was in my twenties then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nowadays you're yeah, you're in, was, you're in short. My first Hollywood memorabilia piece and I almost burn in and knee up together. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Alan, what is something that you don't currently have that you would want to get in, like uh, like your holy grail of uh, memorabilia pieces? Oh, you mean movie memorabilia or comic book memorabilia? Either or. Comic book, I mean, yeah, I'd love to have an Action 1 or Detective 27 or Marvel Comics one. We have a Captain America number one. That's the rarest book in our collection. Oh, wow. um, we, we just lost out yesterday on getting a Sensation number one, you know, Wonder Woman's first full appearance. Yeah. Um, so we kind of lost that on that yesterday, unfortunately. We're hoping maybe the guy will come back to the table and, uh, and we can acquire that for the museum. Um, movie memorabilia, boy, I would, uh, you know, I tell you, you know, if you would have asked me like five years ago, I would have said an Adam West Batman costume, but I have that now. <laughs> so I've got to, you know, um, you know, the Michael Keaton Batman costume, that's kind of a big deal to me. I really like that. Uh, a Christopher Reeve Superman costume would, would be amazing. Uh, one of Chris Hemsworth's Thor hammers or mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man suits. You know, there, there are several pieces that, yeah, we would just love to have any of those pieces. Wow. wow. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anybody in this room that's turned exactly, down wouldn't that. Yeah, would we all? I, like, I, think I we would, would wear them to work every day. It's just day. Yeah. get one, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Alan, we, um, you know, we here at the Cinescape, like like we said, you know, we're big Marvel movie lovers. Uh, you know, just comic book uh, genre in general. Um, you know, we got a lot of movies coming out this year, and you know, it sounds like you're you're a big film guy yourself. What um, what... I, I do, I go see everything opening weekend. I do actually a lot of movie reviews for you know a lot of the local media. Ah, that's awesome. Out. Yeah, we um, hold on before before you ask him the question, are you more of a DC fan or a Marvel fan? Or are you kind of split in the middle? I'm actually both, you know, and and I'm kind of one of those, you know, people are like, oh, you know, I hate DC or I hate Marvel. It's like, you know, why can't you like them both? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, we uh, we here, you know, we have a little ritual that we do. We go out um, to the new releases. You know, they usually come out on um, on uh, Thursdays, sometimes even Wednesdays uh, now. Um mm-hmm. And, you know, we uh, it's been a tradition that we've been doing for years now. So we go out to the early show and we, you know, we see the Marvel movies. Um, what first or of, Bill falls asleep during the DC movie. Yeah, I fall asleep during the DC <laughs> movie. So uh, my, you know, I don't understand why everybody rags on the DC movie so bad. You know, I don't think they're that bad. Uh, I, they're not. 
Uh, that's the thing. I, I mean, I Suicide I fe- Squad was Suicide Squad. I, <laughs> whoa, I whoa, whoa. Suicide Squad was good. Uh, I thought I'd like Suicide Squad. You like Ninja Turtles? You I idiot. Did, I, I'll go watch it again. <laughs> I'll get a full. I'm not a Ninja Turtle guy. <laughs> I, I'll go. I'll go buy a Ninja Turtle costume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's our uh, producer Mike. He uh, he he is uh, swearing that that the new Ninja Turtles genre is. Uh, is worth worth viewing. Other but. than other than okay. the other than the horrible shredder, I the just whole thing's horrible. I don't like the shredder, but I like the turtles. Stop it! <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't go. I didn't go see the Ninja Turtles movie. I guess I don't consider them superheroes. So so so, Alan, you wouldn't consider getting one of the old uh, Ninja Turtle uh, costumes from the nineties oh. to, to just you know maybe stick in the corner uh, <laughs> next to you know, Adam West? I, no, I, I would because I understand just because I don't like it. Yeah. You know, I'm not a big fan that other people aren't. Yeah. So you know, obviously, you know, we think of the museum, we think of everybody in general. So no, we would certainly have something like that if it you know somebody wanted to donate it or yeah. or it came you know came available at the right price. Right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, something like that, I'm just thinking would be cool because. You know that was uh, a live action Ninja Turtles movie that you know these actors wore. Uh, you so know, what, these, you're getting these, CGI now. Okay. These body no. suits, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. they were no, Jim no, Henson no, no, creations. No, we definitely would. Yeah, no, if we had the opportunity, we certainly would. Yeah. That, there you go. There you go. And and Sean, you said those were Jim Henson suits. Yeah. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, they were. That, yeah, I didn't know that. And they um, still look better than what uh, what we're getting now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just goes to show, you know, not everything should should be CGI, but um. Uh, circling back, Alan, um, you know, I, I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, what, what has been your favorite Marvel movie, uh, to date and what Marvel movie are you most excited for, um, in 2017? It's a tie for me between the two, my two favorite Marvel movies It's between Avengers. Okay. The first one. Yeah, that's a great one. And Captain America first Avenger. Okay. We, I'm, I'm a big I'm a big World War II history buff. Okay. So I love that that was so set. You know, is it, it was you know it was a time period piece. Right. And I thought that they did it so well. Um. And you know, and I'm a big lover of World War II, the early Captain America stuff. I mean, you know, I've, I've filmed with Stan Lee, Alan Bellman. You know, a lot of folks know him. You know, because you know him and Stan are the last living Captain America artist, artist and writer from the the Golden Age yeah. era of comic books. Um, you know, Alan Bellman, I, I love very dearly, like he's my own grandfather. And so I'm very, you know, that, that generation really, you know, resonates with me because yeah. I do a lot of the comics in World War II panels and a lot of the comic cons. That's my favorite period in history. Yeah, I agree. That movie, uh, it, it was done very, very well with, um, you know, with tying up those, uh, loose ends of World War II and, and Cap's, mm-hmm. uh, backdrop story there. Um, so what, uh, what movie are you looking forward to from Marvel, uh, this year? This year, you know, I really thought, I like the new Spider-Man. Yeah. You know, the yeah, the, the, the new kids playing Spider-Man is, is great. And it kind of reminds me of my son. My, my youngest uh, is about that age. He's 17. And he cosplays Spider-Man. So he kind of reminds me of the, the new Spider-Man. Um, but when we were at Chicago Con, he did a little bit of a unique cosplay. He did a Jedi Spider-Man. He had the oh, wow. Spider-Man oh, nice. costume with the robes and the custom lightsaber. And uh, he, he was pretty popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome because I actually brought in my uh, Star Wars effects lightsaber that I just bought last week. And uh, um, if you watch the recap video of, of the today's show, I was... Uh, Hacking things up in the studio here yeah, with he's my uh, a mess. with my lights here. I'm gonna, t- <laughs> I'm gonna you know I'm gonna turn it on real quick and you can see if you can hear it. Uh... Yep, I can hear <laughs> it. Don't, don't break your new toy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so we've been uh, we've been having fun with that in the studio today, but um, <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, Alan, do you ever just go into your museum and look around and realize I you've do. just just. Like just look around and smile and realize you've got everything as like as a child everybody wants a room like that and now you I have do. it. You I do. I so do that. I I kind of I walk around sometimes. You know, so we just put in brand new display cases upstairs because uh, we're doing a lot of that before you know before we you know while we're trying to raise the money to move next year or this year. And I do do that. I go in there like before we open or like when I close and I and I do get like I get very nostalgic. Yeah. And I'll walk through it and I'll be like, you know, if my 14-year-old self could see <laughs> exactly. this, could, 
he probably not think about girls. <laughs> <laughs> you, Maybe I don't want to go that far, but I'm just saying it would just it would be like totally mind blowing to my 14 year old self. And and, and now and now and what? Yeah. And now and what would be your most you know explicit response? And 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 mind you, you. This this show is unfiltered and you can curse. So so like to okay, to, okay. Pig, yeah, to piggyback sometimes. Yeah, to <laughs> piggyback that thought, like Mike just said, you walk into, you know, your your uh you know, your museum and you're you know, you flick the switch on, you're all by yourself and you see all this cool shit on your walls and you like you know, what what's just going through your thought process right at that point, you know, completely uh you know, unfiltered. You know, I'm just, you know, I, I like, you know, it's a big sense of pride. Yeah. You know, because it, it's my life's work. I've dedicated my life to preserving the history, you know, and these things that we have. And, you know, when people come through, you know, they're like, you know, hey, you know, we've seen you on Toy Hunter, we've seen you on Salem Superfans or Fast Night. You know, people come, you know, they, and they come here, and this thing's sitting in my backyard. It's yeah. kind of nuts. You know, <laughs> and we bring in more tourism than any museum in Elkhart County with this thing sitting in my backyard. It's kind of nuts. That's awesome. And the people come in and they, they appreciate, you know, that I'm sharing it. I'm showcasing it to people that, you know, I'm sure, you know, that people really enjoy that. So, I mean, I enjoy talking to the fans when they come in. In fact, that's kind of what happened. I was about five minutes late calling you guys when you texted me because there, you know, there's a big family of like eight that, you know, we're sitting me in the day we're talking about, you know, you know, Linda Carter Wonder Woman. She spun around, and uh, bam! You know, there she wasn't in, in her uh, in her uh, her hot uh, bathing suit costume there. And <laughs> we were just, you know, because he was about my age. You know, he's mid late forties, and we were just kind of being very nostalgic about that. And I kind of get like that with a lot of people that come through. Yeah, that's all. Not a lot of people get to live their dream and live doing something like that, and and being able to like talk about it all the time with like-minded people yeah and i was looking at i google image the uh the museum and i saw a lot of you with a huge smile on your face i'm like man that's a that's just an awesome thing to see somebody who's doing what they loved and and doing it well and and getting the recognition that you get it's it's very cool it's very awesome to see very uh it, it very is. inspiring I, mean, I couldn't be happier you know obviously you know uh mo- most of the stuff has been self-funded over the years you know we we don't get a lot of uh you know, donations and things like that, you know, as much as we would like to, because we're just totally swamped now. We just really got to raise money to to move. Uh, in fact, we're working on a big project right now. We're actually doing our first annual Hall of Heroes Con. It's coming up March 11th and 12th. Oh, nice. Oh, I don't cool. know if you saw that. You know, I mean, I've worked with several cons over the years, you know, C2E2 and, and Wizard World and uh, Indiana Con and Grand Rapids, and I do panels and, and work with, you know, those guys. I've been involved in cons for over 20 years. Um But then I was approached by the city of Elkhart and said, hey, you know, you're the only museum. We'd like to do a con. The new mayor that came in last year, uh, his his son is actually one of the marketing guys at uh, San Diego Con. And he's like, hey, you know, I want to start a con here in Elkhart. Everybody says you're going to talk to. What do we need to do to make it happen? I'm like, well, we just just start planning it out. And that started about a year ago, and we're bringing in – we're bringing in Dean Cain. We're bringing in Red Brown, the Captain America actor from the 1980s movies. we're bringing in Chris Brewster, who is uh, Chris Evans' stunt double for the Captain America films. Oh, he also stunt doubles for Charlie Cox and Daredevil. He's uh, he and I are going to do a uh, fight choreography scene on stage on Sunday. So that's something that's never been done at cons. You know, a Marvel stunt show. Which yeah. Is going to be just off the hook. And we're doing a thing called Animation Alley. We're bringing in Tom Cook from Hanna Barbera that worked on Super Friends, Flintstones, Jetsons, Scooby Doo, The Smurfs. Thunder of the Barbarian, He-Man, She-Ra. You know, he works on King of the Hill now. You know, we're bringing him in, uh, bringing in one of his buddies who did the first two seasons of The Simpsons. His other buddy that's coming with him uh, worked at uh, Disney, worked on Milan, um, Tarzan, the TV series on Disney. Um, what else did he do? Yeah, Milan, uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, Aladdin. You know, he worked on all those big films. Uh, we'll bring in one of the animators from uh, Jimmy Neutron. Uh, so we're just going to do this big thing called Animation Alley, and we're going to have like five you know, world-class animators right there for people to see and meet. And uh, we're bringing in Alan Bellman, who I mentioned earlier, that uh, you know, Marvel Films is doing a documentary on him. The guy's 92 years old, can still draw Captain America. It's just amazing. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So we'll, I mean, yeah, uh, we yeah, just we'll got be... some great uh, Mystery Science Theater. You guys familiar with that? Yeah. yeah. 
Big time. Okay, well, the relaunch is coming in March. They're actually doing a live show on uh, stage for our con. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you, I mean, that's you. People are pretty excited. We just announced that on Tuesday that Mystery Science Theater is, is doing a live show at our con. Yeah, wow, those awesome. guys so are just, hilarious. I wanted to do things that have never, that I've not seen at other cons in the 20 years I've been doing this, just to make it really unique to, to our con. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to make sure that we share out all that information for that con on yeah, our yeah, pages. Yeah, you know, yeah, we've got the the website, the Facebook site for the Holly Heroes Comic Con is up. Uh, yeah, if you could uh, please uh, be greatly appreciative of that. Yeah, definitely. And I think we really need to make it a point to venture out. we got to go out there. Yeah, to see we the gotta, museum. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because that, it sounds yeah. you know, we've like We've been trying every to get comic dream. book men out here to film. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That'd be really well, cool. you know, the funny thing is, we've been on the docket since season one for wow. them to come out here and film an episode. It just hasn't happened yet. We're in season six now. Oh, yeah. I, I watched that show. I love that show. And, and seeing oh, I know. You, yeah. What, I, you know, one of the producers from like the first season, yeah. you know, stopped here on his way to Hawaii to start doing some film. And he stopped by. And he goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, I had you guys on the list for season one. And, uh, you oh. know, just nobody wanted to travel and stuff. And, uh, it would definitely and then, be perfect. You know, and Ming Chen, I saw him in D.C. at Awesome Con. And he's like, he goes, yeah. He goes, I've heard the producers talking about that. You know, at some point we're going to come out and film that. I was like, come on, Kevin, come on out here. <laughs> yeah, you know, let's do Kevin's it. Kevin's a big fan. He, you know, Kevin Smith is a huge fan. You know, he would love, he would love our museum. He would just go nuts with it. You know, we'd have let him slide down the back point into the back cave, yeah. and uh, it'd be it'd be a great episode. Yeah, uh, I, I think we need to do a live show from there. <laughs> yes. I, I think so. You I, guys should. That would, I'm telling you, it would be it would be awesome. You know, we slide down the bat pole. We can do the Batman music. <laughs> yeah. Oh we my God. Bat and, uh, that's it. This is, my, this is my, that's my summer vacation. Don't, don't tell Bill he's allowed to slide down the bat pole because <laughs> yeah. then he's not going to do anything but continuously slide down the bat pole. <laughs> you can get a picture on the Ghost Rider motorcycle. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, so, Mike, I think what we need to do is yes. take Toxic on the road. Okay, this uh, is Facebook Live video, you, you yes. know, road trip across I'll get everything uh, ready. Across I'll just... state lines. It, it would be a new, a new term when you come here. It's going to be nerdasm. Nerdasm. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Nice, nice. Nerdasm, nerdasm. There you go. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, in wrapping up, Alan, we're, um, you know, we're so happy that, you know, we had the opportunity to talk to you today and that uh, you came on the show. Um, you know, we're definitely going to. Um, share out all the information that uh, that we got today from you. Um, Sean, did you have any closing remarks? No, nah, just that yeah, we're definitely going to make it a point to get out there and see the, everything yeah, that we yeah, have come, going yeah, on. Yeah, come see us. You guys you guys love it. Yeah, that's a, it sounds like a like a play place. I, I, I want to <laughs> go right now. An adult playground. <laughs> Alan, thank you so much for calling in, and we will hey, speak with you again soon. Hey, thanks for having me on, soon. guys. Appreciate it. So, thanks, yeah, Alan. No problem. All right. God, we got to go. Yeah. I want to go right now. Alan from the <laughs> Hall of Heroes Museum <laughs> dot com. Bill, was that your Facebook? Sub- check it out. Was that your submission to for a uh, road trip from Toxic to? Uh, yeah. Right yeah. Now yeah. we're putting it in right now. Yeah, right. We're putting this in that ticket right now. Yeah. I got to put this uh, PTO <laughs> date, request in. <laughs> date to be announced. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely, so, I definitely would be down with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah um, that sounds amazing. Yeah. So I, I think you know something like that would be you know awesome. Yeah. And uh, you know. Oh, dude! I was looking at the pictures online. But it's it's one of those one of those museums where you just want to go in and you want to play. You with want to everything. touch everything. You want to touch yeah. everything. Please touch you the wanna, museum. Yeah, you want to go in there and you're like, why are th- I see that toy in its in its original box? Yeah, let's, let's take it out. I know. I want to. <laughs> I want to wear the Adam West costume. I want to relive you know? my childhood. Yeah, can we yeah. can we put on the costumes and stuff too when we get <laughs> <Yeah>. there? <laughs> <laughs> it's it. Yeah, it's just oh an awesome God. time. Um. Yeah. So, Mike, uh, we need to start a. A GoFundMe page and yes, uh, yes. and get him on. All Please right. send us yeah. to Indiana. Yeah, <laughs> that probably is not too far of a drive. No, I it's. Uh, can we? Uh, can we Google it? Let's ask Siri. <laughs> hey Siri, how far is the superhero museum? <laughs> Siri, how far is uh, Indiana from my current location? I did not understand you, Bill. That's what I should probably say. About 586 miles away as the crow flies. Oh, okay. Dumbass, Siri. Uh, not miles. I want time. Well, if we're doing 60 miles an hour for 500 miles, Siri, it's how like long nine would it hours. How take me to travel to Indiana from here? The traffic to Indianapolis, Siri, balance <laughs> is moderate. So it should take approximately nine hours and 59 Yeah, see, I was right. All right. Yeah, that's not well, too bad. Well, this summer... 
We're we're, we're gonna, gonna make a concerted effort to get out there. Yeah, Mike better be too. Yeah, with his new uh, summer bod that he's been working. Uh-huh. on. Yeah, you can impress all the Indiana. Summer fans. loving <laughs> down in the sand. That's what I'm, trying, I'm going for the John Travolta look. Yeah, from back in Sandy. the day. That's why I'm gonna get the curl. Sandy. Real quick, uh, we have another caller on the line, but uh, looking at our Twitter poll about which Wayne's World movie yeah. that people are preferring, a hundred percent of the people that voted Wayne's World won. And oh. who's that, one? One person? The, the, yeah, we got 12 votes. 12, 12, 12 votes. All said Wayne's World. The there's original. not a lot of sequels that beat out the original. But it is a good no. one. All right, on the line, we have... Who the hell is this? Hello, caller. Pat Mahoney. Whoa! Hey, Pat, Pat Mahoney. Cinescape Jeopardy, man. Yeah, this yeah. is our Cinescape Jeopardy host, Pat Mahoney. If you've seen that Hello. episode, he is calling in. What's going on, man? Nothing much. Am I watching Snowboarding on ESPN for some reason. Snowboarding. That's, that's really not the right know. answer. You're really watching. You're watching the live stream of our show on ToxicRadio.net. Well, yeah, that's pretty much next to me, so that's why <laughs> snowboarding was mysteriously on my TV. Ah, okay. Yeah. So I wasn't paying attention to that. I was paying attention Pat, to the live stream. Pat, it's Bill. Yeah. Uh, are you able to name a snowboarding movie by any chance? Oh God, a snowboarding movie. Uh, what was that one that sucked? Uh, I think I know what you're talking about, too. Isn't it like Out Cold? <laughs> yeah. Oh, with Zach Galifianakis? <laughs> Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> That's not a oh snowboarding movie. Yeah. They snowboarded, did it? They're all pretty, uh, they're all pretty No, bad. they ski. They ski. One of them snowboards. The, the kid snowboards. Ah, uh, whatever. There's a snowboard. In There's the one. Snow- <laughs> 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 Give me snowboard. the snowboard. <laughs> yeah, well, well, since we're on this topic, remember uh, the rollerblading movie, uh, Airborne? Oh, yeah. Airborne, yeah. With yeah. Jack Black and... Uh, <laughs> uh, Horrible. Who, yeah. Seth was, Green. Yeah, Seth Green. Your uh, you're lookalike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Movie stunk too. <laughs> yeah, where's my Vulcan skull music at? I, Do I you got it? I-, I just told him to cue it up. <laughs> Billy got that aux cord. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, the, oh, aux the aux cord, cord is back. Oh, <laughs> he's working on it. I'm going to keep it muted while you try and plug it in so we don't kill everybody's ears. <laughs> the aux cord. Fantastic. The aux cord. Quick question, Sean, about a follow up conversation we had the uh, about 25 minutes ago, probably to an hour. Yeah, what do you got? <laughs> the Logan movie, right? Right. The Mr. Sinister thing? Yeah. So he's officially not in that, right? Yeah, you're, you're 100% I, uh, positive. I went. I went back and pulled up the article. Uh, this is uh, a quote from. Uh, who's? I have a question about the Logan movie that's yeah, concerning yeah. me because I'm not a it. huge comic book guy. While 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 Sean finds what he's looking for, I'm not a huge comic book guy. But I love the movies. I love the world. I love everything about it. Now I thought Wolverine's not supposed to age. Isn't that the way it works? Is now, that he am I wrong ages, with that? But he just he doesn't die. He can still age. Though. So he can age. He ages okay. slower than other people do. Slow. Uh, okay, yeah. cuz like I s- saw in the trailer that he's got gray hair and I'm like, but I thought he cuz he's always regenerating yeah. that he doesn't age. Yeah, he just ages a lot slower than the, right, because he's like a 100 some years old, but he just now looks like he's 60, yeah. you know. Okay, so I'll take it. I'll take it. The storyline's taken from the old man Logan comic right. arc. So they had to change a lot because they don't have the rights to Hawkeye and the Hulk like they do in the comics. Uh, yeah, so they're going to be changing a lot of things around. All right. Uh, but, Pat, going back to what you were saying, this is from director James Mangold regarding why Mr. Sinister is not going to be in uh, – Logan. Uh, Can't wait to hear the quote this says, that's not in this movie. Everything is kind of as real as we can make it. The movie is trying to kind of take a step backward from that kind of spectacle so that we uh, get another kind of gain, you know? There's that loss, but the gain is that the movie feels extremely real and is, as one person who saw the film said to me, I feel like I could go down the street and run into that Wolverine, meaning that this is in my world, not some shiny other world. This is actually taking place in my world. So I don't know why you would tease Mr. Sinister at the end of X-Men Apocalypse. And that sounds horrible. Yeah. It just sounds like an awful explanation. Like, it's just, once again, it just... It just questions like what the studio is doing. They have no direction. No, you know, I think not. the future pants was supposed to be this big reboot to bring cohesiveness into their films and their timelines, and they just continually screw it up. It's kind of like now you uh, get like this. It's kind of like 
Pat. It's You're kinda, good. It's kind of just like if, uh, you know, Bulk and Skull were just like, you know, exactly. you know, just kind of <laughs> roaming around yeah, the movie so set, so doing their own thing. You know, just. <laughs> They, they're, they're just not getting anything done, and uh, Fox just doesn't know what they're really doing. I think this so. should play in front of every Fox movie from now on. Exactly. It's just like Bulk and Skull or the brains behind yeah. you know, the X-Men time. So we're going to do this now. We're going to do this. We're going to have old man Logan now, you know, walking around with some kid. <laughs> Professor X curses in the trailer. I mean, it's oh, I'm fucking that movie ninety. Looks terrible. Yeah. So, Pat, well, what did you think about the new trailer that came out this week? Um, no, you're not Pat. No, I'm not. <laughs> Pat. <laughs> Logan <one? laughs> yeah. Uh, Logan I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Logan trailer. <laughs> yeah, you keep playing that music after that. <laughs> <laughs> the Logan show. I mean, <laughs> it just <laughs> it just doesn't do anything, to me, man. It doesn't really get me excited. You know what I didn't <laughs> like about it? The, the music, and I didn't. Like... <laughs> I didn't like. <laughs> Professor, if the mu- if the trailer had that music, I would be. Super pumped to see that because that's what I look. You know, that's what I'm thinking of when I see it. I, I understand. I understand they're going for a darker, grittier movie. <laughs> you know what's oh great? My God, I'm crying. <laughs> but, but you know, you know those. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, but Professor Professor Xavier in it. Yeah. The trailer. Right. I, I'm like. I don't want to see him like laying in a bed or like, he's yeah, supposed he's, like, to be in his wheelchair. His yeah, he looks like a regular guy who should be in Atlantic City at one of the casinos. <laughs> My fingers or hurt. <laughs> and it, bo- no? it bothers me seeing him like that. And then at one point, yeah. he, I think he curses in it in the trailer. He yeah. does. Yeah, and I'm he like, does. Like he drops an F bomb. Fuck. No, that's Professor Xavier. He, he holds himself to a higher standard and shouldn't be cursing. Or listening yeah. to that music. That was my problem that's, with it. That's why the bulk of scroll music should be playing throughout that trailer. It's a goddamn joke. I, I, I hate as soon as he cursed, I know it was supposed to be like a shocking thing that he cursed, but I'm like, no. No, that's ex- that's Professor Xavier. He should not be cursing. Right. He should not be dressed like he's going out on a golfing trip. He should not <laughs> that's not him. Number one. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that, Engage. Like that bothered me. Logan, it's like fear and loathing in Las Vegas with yeah. Professor X and some <laughs> dumb girl. It, it bothered me it's so much. Like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Professor X and the Wolverine. <laughs> and you could, you know what? We should start. You know those things you see on like Facebook <laughs> or Twitter. It's like Celine a song. It's like someone always puts like you know the song from Titanic with like a clip from something. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Need to do that with the Balkan skull. Music. <laughs> I didn't know chain That's... letters were still a thing. I'm sorry. I'm getting chain letters sent to me by our intern. Chain Just letters. Wait, who's your intern? Juan Perez. Oh. We know Juan. Yeah. yeah. Juan sending me chain letters. They now come through Facebook Messenger. Oh. Sorry, I had to make that a so, uh, yeah, no, 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 what it, Was well, it MySpace or AOL? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think we should inform our uh, viewers of such spam so that they can protect themselves. Yeah, what if does... you get some chain mail letter from Juan, <laughs> don't open it. <laughs> what's uh <laughs> what's the chain mail that he uh What's it about? What's it regarding? Uh, I don't. Let me. Who's your first kiss? Uh, I'm sorry for a, bringing you, the show to are a you halt. A Ni- are you a Nigerian prince that is owed your oh, bitch must pay? Warren Buffett is asking <laughs> everyone to forward this email <laughs> to a minimum of 20 people, and to ask each of those to do likewise. In three days, most people in the United States will have the message. This is the idea, and should be passed around. The Buffett rule. The let's Vulcan see. Let's see if the <laughs> Sorry, idiots understand great. what people pressure. Uh, so, okay, it's about <laughs> it's about politics and average salaries. I don't know. Well, there you have it. A uh, yeah. spam <laughs> chain mail to send that, to Congress. Uh, that's uh, being sent through Facebook. This is, it's apparently how we get Trump out of office. Yeah. So okay. keep an eye out for uh, said uh, chain mail that could uh, potentially be a Trojan virus. So <laughs> and, look out. and now the station is infected.
<laughs> now the station shuts hey, down. Hey, here's a here's a question. When when are you guys having the rematch of Sin Escape Jeopardy? Ooh. Uh, well, possibly at uh, uh, Nasfest. Really uh, we might like, have one at uh, Nasfest. Actually, uh, um, if uh, if I call my parents and I put them on the spot, uh, <laughs> we uh, we have Pat um, an idea that I I came up with. Um, I ran it by Sean. Um, should I, should I put it on the air already, Mike? A, little, a first look here, a, uh, a, a sneak peek. I mean, I guess. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it, it subject to uh, change. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I have a Captain Picard uh, cardboard stand up. You know. Yes. It's a life size uh, stand up. <laughs> right. And uh, so we're gonna put it in a wheelchair, and then it's gonna be Xavier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but the, the concept is gonna be that. Uh, uh, we'll have the uh, wife wife size stand up, um, and attached to them will be uh, a variety of um, game show cards, and um, it's gonna be uh, we're gonna play the game Captain Pick a Card, and <laughs> get it, I get it, get it, contestants, like card. yeah, contestants, do will- it live. Yeah, <laughs> pick a card. <laughs> they're gonna pick a card, and they're gonna be. You know, battling it out, and uh, yeah, so um, it's gonna be a great time, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, gonna be a, a really yeah, cool yeah, game. I that. feel like uh, we need to change our theme music <laughs> for the show to this. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so yeah, that's coming soon. But uh, yeah, man, let's bring Jeopardy back. I mean, if you can, you know, mosey your way down here on a Sunday, that uh, you know. Take a moment yeah, out from I mean, uh, doing it. kids' a, birthday parties or whatever you do. Yeah, I'm a very in-demand host, um, <laughs> so you know. But I, I could always make time. Yeah. For the guys at the Cinescape. That, you know, that's, that'd be that great. That should be an issue. You know? <laughs> Pat, was yeah. there uh, any other pressing movie issues that you wanted to bring up while while we have you on the line? Uh, well. I mean, I know me and you have spoke before how I'm I'm mad at the MCU, but I, I think that's probably a, a conversation best suited for a, a long segment. Okay. You know? Yeah, we can do have, that. I'm not necessarily mad at it. I just, you know. You got some issues. A little teaser. Yeah, just I got a lot of problems with you people, it. and you're all going to hear about it. <laughs> Pat's <Yeah>. getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> just going back on some rewatches, I think that they can do a lot without a lot of the... I guess you can cue the Balkan skull music for this. The <laughs> stupid humor of that. Just, you know. <laughs> exactly. Stop whining. <laughs> Jesus. So, but no, I mean, that's really the only great. But I, to be honest, I'm more excited for the Power Rangers movie than I am for the Logan movie, just based on the trailer. <laughs> like, I don't think it's going to be amazing. <laughs> but uh, I think it's going to be, you know. What would you think about the trailer, the Pat? I, I really didn't like uh, uh, how... Zordon looks like um, the the artificial intelligence thing from iRobot, you know? Or like Max Hedrome, kind of. You know, the, remember Max Hedrome? No. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> oh, God, don't care, don't care. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, how he's just kind of, I see what you're saying, how he's just kind of like a head sticking out of a wall. Yeah, like, yeah, he should be a head floating yeah. in the Yeah, tube. I want to see a big oh, what do you want floating to be? You block. You want to be like a full-bodied guy or just that? No, guy? we had no. that in the first Power Rangers movie, and it looked like shit. Yeah. Yeah, it looks He's stupid. all wrinkled up. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you want him to look like, uh, you know, Walt from Breaking Bad? Or... <laughs> I think he might look know. like uh, the know. new uh, Professor X and Logan. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck. He, he yeah. might have a back problem too. I Stop. broke my back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? You broke back. Well, I mean, regardless, what, uh, regardless, uh, a vertebrae or, or a uh, portion? Spinal. Spinal. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, I mean, I'll see them both, but I mean, the Logan one just to me is just a complete turn off right now. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm not taking the, the tone that these trailers have given us the sad, depressing music. You know, it's just very anticlimactic. Uh, <laughs> this would, yeah, this would be a lot better in terms of what I want to see in a Logan movie. Uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll look to get you back in the studio sometime soon. Uh, you know, we can go on your MCU rant and, you know, we got some, uh, 
Got some other things coming up. Uh, Pat, yeah. thanks for calling in, buddy. We'll see you soon. Hey, as always, see you soon. And, Bill, you better study up for that rematch, pal. You don't want to be humiliated again. So. Uh, <laughs> anytime, so this, this anywhere, I'll be there. Ah, All right, boys. Take care. All you right, too. have a good one. All right, that is going to end our show today. We also are going to end <laughs> end our Twitter poll. 14 people have now voted, and they've all chosen the original Wayne's World over Wayne's World 2. Huh. Yeah, well, so, you know. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, we'll, I guess, continue to monitor that. and um, It'll be know. up for a full day, so we'll, we'll keep checking back. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> But, um, you know, thank you to our guest, Alan Stewart. Uh, yeah, you're great, Alan. Thanks the, for calling uh, in. Yeah, Hall of Heroes Superhero Museum. And uh, for Mike, Frank yeah. Lino, our producer. Keep that music going. We're yeah. going to go out on it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Make sure you check us out on YouTube at the Cinescape Podcast. You can find us online at Facebook and Twitter. Also check out uh, the Toxic Radio website, ToxicRadio.net. Yeah. See all the cool things going on here. For myself, Sean Harrigan, for Bill Tazi and producer Toxic Mike. And Bulk and Skull. And Bulk and Skull. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys again in two weeks. Woo!